to hear and a heart to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. The title of the message tonight is Manifesting Your Healing. It would also be good, a uh, good uh, title would be, uh, it's a more general uh, way to look at things, um, Manifesting Your Blessings with Application to Healing. So this is really a general message, uh, but I, I chose to apply it to healing because if I just talk in general terms, it's hard to get our mind around it and see exactly how to apply it. But if we take a topic like healing, uh, then we can see how to manifest, how to apply this message. The message is about manifesting uh, the promises of God, the blessings of God. Uh, and we all need uh, those things. And uh, what, what I want to say about healing is when you ask for healing uh, and someone prays for you in, for healing, then you immediately receive healing because by Jesus' wounds, we were healed. Yeah. And so he already uh, healed us on the cross by his wounds. That's 1 Peter 2.24. But the manifestation may be hindered. Mm. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. So God already sent his son. The son, His son went to the cross, and part of that uh, work on the cross was our healing. And so he's not going to deny you healing if he's already paid the price for it. Mm. So he's already paid the price, and, and so it's there for you. And it's yours when you ask for it, okay? But the manifestation, and there's a lot of reasons uh, that the manifestation of healing uh, might be uh, hindered. And the same thing about blessings, any of the blessings. Uh, this message could easily be applied to uh, prosperity, could be applied to the soundness of mind, mm -hmm. could be mm -hmm. applied to peace. Any promise of God, this message will apply to and so we want to uh, focus on the application in healing and say that the manifestation of healing occurs because of many different factors, one of which is the faith of the person being prayed for, and the other is the amount of power being administered or released. Now, we know, for example, that the woman with the issue of blood uh, she had faith. She came and said, if I may touch the hem of Jesus's garment, I will be healed. I'm talking about Mark uh, chapter five. And so that was her faith. And, and she was confessing her faith. And then the power went out when, it, when she touched his garment, the power went out. So you have these two factors, the faith of the person and the power that is administered. Okay, so uh, when we pray for one another, then both of those things are involved, uh, your faith and the power of God that's released into the situation, okay? But what we're really going to focus on tonight are hindrances, because uh, there's a lot of different hindrances, but we're going to talk about seven hindrances, seven hindrances to uh, healing, and the seven are this, ignorance unbelief, unconfessed sins. Number four is unforgiveness. Number five is witchcraft. And number six is the occult. And number seven are the curses. So those are just seven different, uh, different hindrances that we'll look at and see how to overcome. Amen. Uh, okay, now, what I want, the way I want to start this then is to say that when you are born again, you have a new man inside of you, uh, a new spirit man. Uh, but the old man is still existing. The st the, so you've got the soul and you, uh, all your will, all your memory, you've got all of those things and they still exist. And that's called the fl flesh, but it's also called the old man. Now, 
he, uh, Ephesians 4, verses 20 through 22, uh, talk about putting off the old man, man. put it off. And, and because, and why would we want to put off the old man? Because it says it's corrupt. Uh, it's corrupt. The old man is corrupt. Mm. And, and so we've got to put on the new man. But the way we do that is to put off the old man, renew the spirit, <clears throat> to renew our mind, the spirit of the mind. Okay. So you put off the old man. That's the old a deceitful lust and the corruption uh, and that old conduct, the way we used to be. Well, uh, before we came to Jesus, it would be easy to get mad. It would be we could be envious, we could have strife, argument, all, all of those kinds of things. But when we come to Jesus, we're born again, our spirit man becomes alive, and the Holy Father, Heavenly Father, becomes our Father of our spirit, okay? But we have to renew our mind, renew the spirit of our mind, so that we can begin to operate as the new man. Mm -hmm. So Ephesians 4 Verses 20 through 22 talks about putting off the old man, putting on the new man. Now, mm. it's easy for us to say, well, I have put off the old man, I put on the new man. But I've got a test and I've got a way to examine whether or not we're really living uh, in the new man. And the difference between the old man and the new man, the old man is of the earth. And the new man is of heaven. Mm. So the old man ha is a citizen of earth. Uh, and so when we were born on this earth, we, we became a citizen of earth. And uh, we're, the old man is still a citizen of earth. But the new man, uh, and this is uh, Philippians 3, verse 20, says that our citizenship is in heaven. Okay. So the new man. Uh, brings down heaven to earth. Mm, so the new that. man lives from the perspective of heaven towards earth, from heaven towards earth. That's the new man. The old man uh, uh, continues to live from the perspective of earth to heaven. And so what we see is that people uh, who are living in the old man they continue to ask God to heal them, for example. We're talking about healing tonight. Mm -hmm. So the old man will be from living from the perspective of earth towards heaven. heaven. So if they have sickness, the old man has sickness, then he will continually be asking God to heal him or her, the old man. But the new man. Mm -hmm. The new man is born from above. Mm -hmm. And so his perspective, the new man, is from heaven to earth. Okay, now how does that apply? Well, see, 1 Peter 2, 24 says, by his wounds or his stripes, we were healed. Okay, so when we pray to be healed, we receive healing immediately, <clears throat> but we may not feel like we're healed. We may not see an improvement in our body. Now, this is a this is something I learned in 1979, and it was a very important uh, lesson that I learned. And, and and I'll give you this example. Uh, on a Saturday in 1979, spring of 1979, Sherry and I were sitting in the living room and we both uh, asked the Lord to fill us with the Holy Spirit, with signs, with uh, tongues, mm -hmm. so that we could pray in tongues. We both asked. <clears throat> now, Sherry uh, immediately began to pray in tongues. Uh, I said, she sounded like a turkey. Uh, but she began, and I mean, there was there was a manifestation. There's a manifestation, and I had no feeling. I, I didn't feel like I was filled with the Spirit. There was nothing 
uh, different in the way I acted or thought. Uh, everything was the same, okay? So on Monday night, <clears throat> that was Saturday, we asked for it. Monday night, we went to a full gospel businessman's uh, meeting. And uh, the man who ministered that night, I went up to him and I explained the situation. On Saturday, I had prayed to be filled with the spirit, but nothing happened, so I didn't receive it. And he said, no, you look at Matthew chapter seven, verse seven. It says, if you ask, you receive. receive. Amen. And see, I caught Amen. hold of that. I caught hold of it. Mm. The truth is that if we ask, we receive. If we seek, we find. Mm -hmm. If we knock, the door will be open to us. So that's the truth. And uh, I believe it's Romans 3, 4 said, let God be the true and every man a liar. So on Monday, when I went and talked to that man, uh, and, and he explained this verse to me, if you ask, you receive it. Uh, and, and so it was my body, my mind, that was the lie because I didn't feel anything. So I thought I didn't receive, but he said, if you ask, you receive, okay? So I caught hold of that, and that's a lesson I learned in 1979. <clears throat> now, when he explained that to me, I didn't change my feelings. I didn't have any physical a manifestation of it. But the next night when I was in a service, uh, I was able to uh, give a tongue uh, that needed to be interpreted. So I was able to pray in tongues, uh, even in a, a public uh, congregation. Uh, and so I did receive it, uh, but I was just too ignorant to, to know that I had received it. Okay, now the new man, see, and you are the new man, and, and you can believe the truth. And the truth is, if you ask, you receive. If you ask, you receive. So if you ask for healing, you receive it. But your mind, your body may not be any different. And so, but who is the truth? God is the truth. See, the new man is going to say, God is true. My feelings, my body, that's all a lie. All of these symptoms about sickness, that's all a lie. The real truth, is the Bible and the Word of God, what the Word of God says. And the Word of God says, if you ask, you receive. <clears throat> so that's what the new man, your new man will think. It will, when you renew your mind, you will know that it's God that is true. And he says, when you ask, you receive. Mm -hmm. So when you ask for healing, you receive it. You may not feel any different. You, you may still have a temperature. You still may have pain in your body, but your body is the lie. Mm, the truth mm, is what mm. God said in his word. Amen. And he said, when you ask, you receive. So it's a very simple concept. And so where are you living? Are you living from the new man or the old man? See, if you live from the new man, you'll believe what God said, regardless of what your body says because the symptoms in your body are lies, but God's word is the truth. Amen. So Amen. this is a Amen. real important concept. The new man is going to be living from heaven, which from the perspective of what God says, whatever God says, that's the truth. What you feel in your body, what you feel in your mind, that's a lie. Those are lying symptoms. The truth is what the word of God says. So who are you and where are you living? From what perspective? Are you living as the new man, living from the perspective of heaven, bringing heaven to earth? Are you living from the old man perspective, asking God to come and keep doing, ask him, him every day to heal you? <clears throat> See, that's the old man. 
Now, it matters, <clears throat> excuse me, how much faith you have. And it matters how much power uh, is administered to you. But even in that, there are still hindrances. <clears throat> the devil wants, the devil wants you not to be healed. The devil doesn't want you to be blessed of God. Amen. And so here are seven different hindrances that might uh, affect your healing the manifestation of it, seven different ones. But what I want you to see from 1 John 3, verse 7, is he who practices righteousness is righteous. righteous. Amen. Amen. Okay, now we're going to put this in application to healing. He who practices righteousness in the area of healing is righteous and healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He who practices righteousness in the area of healing is righteous and healed, is in right standing with God. Hmm. And I'm going to show you how to do it with seven different ways we can overcome. And all of these relate to righteousness. See, the first one is ignorance. And uh, I'm going to relate all of these to healing. Uh, ignorance is a hindrance. Uh, Hosea 4, uh, verse 6 says, um, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's okay. They're, so they're destroyed because they don't have knowledge. Uh, that Okay. So what? how are we going to bring righteousness in this particular concept? We've got to study the word of God. We've got to let the Holy Spirit lead us so that we're not ignorant. <clears throat> you know, Paul said, I don't want you to be ignorant of spiritual things. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to be ignorant of spiritual things. And, and so if we're going to practice righteousness, we cannot continue living in ignorance. We've got to renew our mind, renew the spirit of our mind. And, and so that's number one. How can we practice righteousness, righteousness. in the area of healing? The first one, is by renewing our mind to the word of God. Number two. Well, let me just give an example okay. there. Let me give a personal uh, example about uh, just uh, studying the word. Um, <clears throat> we, we listen to uh, mighty men and women of God um, and they brought the word forth about healing and we would listen to those tapes day and night and we filled our spirit man up with those those scriptures and we had uh, one uh, cassette tape that would play over and over and over again and uh, it was just healing scriptures uh, from from the old testament from the new testament and it would play over and over and over again. Uh, getting, we were just getting that word uh, on the inside of us. Okay. Oh, okay. So if it's ignorance is going to destroy us and we need, whether it was a healing, then we need to study the scriptures on healing. If we needed a sound mind, then uh, study the word, the scriptures mm -hmm. about peace and about the other things that relate to uh, renewing your mind. Okay, so that's number one, the way to practice righteousness related to this first hindrance is to study the word. And if it's about healing, then study the word about healing. Mm -hmm. Number two is unbelief. Okay, so Mark chapter 6, verses 5 and 6, said that in uh, the area where Jesus was raised up, he could do no mighty works there. He could do mm -hmm. no miracles. He couldn't hear, heal the people uh, of any major sicknesses because of, of unbelief. Belief. Okay, so we've got to overcome that. So we've got to practice righteousness in the area of believing. 
Okay, so how can we practice righteousness in the area of believing? Well, listen to uh, people preach about the Word of God. Be around believers who believe in the Word of God and who will encourage you. So this is the way to practice righteousness. So if you practice righteousness, you're righteous. And if you practice righteousness in the area of healing, you will be healed. Okay, here's the third hindrance. And we'll have to practice, we'll have to find out how to practice righteousness in this area. And it is, the third hindrance is unconfessed sins. Mm, mm. The late, uh, James chapter five, verse 16 says, uh, confess your sins one to another. Uh, pray for one, one another, another that you may be healed. Okay, so if you have sin in your life uh, or you've had sin and you've never confessed it to anyone, then that's going to be a hindrance. So how can you practice righteousness? The way to practice righteousness in that area is to confess your sins one to another. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it may be that the women want to get with other women or and, and confess their sins, or the men might want to get with other men and confess their sins so that we can pray for one another and be healed. And then it says, the, right, the prayer of a righteous person bring accomplishes a lot. Mm. Oh, so it's about righteousness. I mean, so how man. can we practice righteousness if we have some unconfessed sins? Well, begin to confess them and pray for one another and we will be healed, okay? The fourth area, uh, fourth hindrance that I'm going to talk about, that I'm going to talk about seven important hindrances to healing. The fourth one is unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. Unforgiveness. Uh, we can't, see, that's, that's not righteousness. If we have unforgiveness, in our life towards ourselves or toward our spouse or toward uh, our children or our parents or, or our business partners or our co-workers or, or just our neighbors or if we have any unforgiveness, that's not practicing righteousness. And so if we're going to be healed, we're going to have to practice righteousness. And, and the way to do this is to forgive. Uh, but, oh, okay. okay, Sherry has something. Well, I just want to add to that that in the medical profession, uh, they have done research and they have found and they have attributed like rheumatoid arthritis, uh, different kinds of cancers, um, um, arteries that are uh, um, clogged up. Um, they, have, they have found that that individual uh, was operating in unforgiveness. I mean, this this is literally uh, substantiated uh, in the medical field uh, that unforgiveness causes uh, these things, and it causes um, uh, migraine headaches. Uh, and so um, we have to get rid of it. See Ephesians four verse thirty two says, "Be you kind." one to another, another, forgiving one another, even as God forgives us in Christ. So if we want God to forgive us, we need to forgive other people. You know, there was a man that was dropped down from the, through, from the roof mm. in front of uh, Jesus. And uh, he first told him, your sins are forgiven. Are forgiven. And then he healed him. <laughs> first, oh, your sins hallelujah. are forgiven. Then we, he was healed. And, it's good, it's good. And so we, we need to recognize that if you want to be healed or any other blessing, if you want any other blessing, then you've got to have forgiveness uh, first. And, and our forgiveness in, is in measure related to what how we forgive other people. If we do not forgive other people, then we're not going to receive the forgiveness that God has for us. But if we forgive other people, uh, then he we can receive his forgiveness. So he wants you forgiven, but it can be hindered. Your forgiveness and your healing and your prosperity, all of that, all of the blessings of God can be hindered if you have unforgiveness 
in your heart. Now, number five and six are witchcraft and the occult. Yeah. Now, both of the reason I bring both of these up is that they are in a passage. Uh, I believe it's uh, uh, a Ephesians uh, 6 uh, verses 5 and 6 and it it lists a bunch of things such as it, uh, sexual immorality and impurity and then it talks about idolatry and witchcraft. Is that Galatians? Huh? Galatians or Ephesians? Oh, oh okay. I guess it is it's, Galatians. It's Galatians. Galatians. Okay. And, and the point I want to make then is that people who do these things do not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is the kingdom of God? Well, that's the realm of miracles because that's the realm of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. so, so we cannot hold our, uh, keep us out of the kingdom if we want to be healed. We need to be operating in the kingdom of God because that's where miracles are. That's where healings are. That's where prosperity is. Amen. All the blessings Amen. of God are in, in the, the kingdom. kingdom. <laughs> Glory to God. So you don't want to uh, be excluded from the, the kingdom, kingdom and from the blessings and the benefits of being in the kingdom. Yep. But any of these things would keep you out uh, from the kingdom and keep you from receiving the blessings that God has for you. Now, that verse there does not say that it keeps a person from going to heaven. The only thing that keeps a person from not going to heaven is rejecting Jesus Christ as the son of God. And so let's say a person is an alcoholic, but that alcoholic still believes that Jesus Christ is the son of God. He may not inherit the kingdom like Brother Fred was talking on about, the earth, the on the earth, the on the he may earth. not receive the blessings here on, on this earth, but it does not keep that alcoholic from going to heaven. The only thing that would keep him out of heaven is rejecting Jesus Christ as the son of God. And I think that's a misconception and a, a lot of judgment has gone on in the body of Christ over people that are alcoholics or prostitutes or smoke cigarettes or smoke uh, weed or, you know, that, do you drugs. know, or do drugs, you know, that they judge that person and say, well, that, you know, that person's not going to heaven, you know, but it says judge not lest we be judged for one thing, but also it's being, you know, we have to know exactly how our heavenly father who is love who's not he doesn't operate in love he is love how he sees us and how he sees that prostitute and how he sees that alcoholic and how he sees uh that person who uh who does um sinful things you know, that, that love is so great and so amazing. And, uh, but that's not Brother Fred's message tonight, well, but. Well, that was, know, so. that was a lesson we learned when we had the mission. Yes. Uh, for homeless people down, uh, downtown in our city, uh, because it was amazing to me that these people were, they had all kinds of sin in their life, but they loved Jesus. And, right. And, and they were going right. to go to heaven. And we saw lots of them uh, pass away over time and, and they went to heaven. Because they had accepted Jesus, they loved Jesus, but they had issues in their life. They had uh, impurity. They had uh, addictions. They had freshly all, desires. All kinds of things. Because that's the old man. The old, old man. man. The old man. See, uh, is corrupt. Is growing corrupt. Growing more and more corrupt because of deceitful lust. Uh, but the new man, though, is renewing the spirit of the mind okay mm -hmm. so i i've covered six things but there's seven i want to cover seven uh, hindrances uh, so let's just review the six i've covered so far and that's mm -hmm. ignorance unbelief unconfessed sins uh unforgiveness uh witchcraft okay let, let's stop right there 
let me just uh, make a comment uh, about the witchcraft and the occult. And that is uh, the more a person operates and is involved with uh, witchcraft and spells and the occult, the, the deeper they get into darkness. And the deeper they get into darkness, uh, then they can lose uh, their salvation uh, with, with all of that activity. Okay. Okay. Now, number seven is curses. This is a hindrance. Now, let's think about what curses are. Well, Deuteronomy 28 tells how the curses come. They come from being disobedient. Uh, being disobedient to God's commands and his statutes. And then the curses come, okay? But the curses come not just because of the disobedience that you might have in your life. It could also come from the disobedience of your great-grandparents and your or your grandparents mm -hmm. or your parents. All of those people can bring curses because the curses go down to the third and fourth generation. And so it's not just what you do. It's not just the disobedience that you have, but it's also the disobedience uh, of your ancestors uh, to the third and fourth generation. And, and so what we're talking, and, and so what are the curses? Well, it says every sickness, I'm still in Deuteronomy 28, from uh, verse 15 on to the end of the chapter, it's you'll if you read that you'll find out that every sickness and every disease is under the curse of the law. Amen. So you Amen. have to deal with the curses. Mm. Okay. Mm. Now, how can mm. we deal? Because I'm talking about righteousness. Yeah. And we want to practice righteousness, and and if we are cursed because of something our ancestors did, well, you. By praying and being led by the Holy Spirit, you can confess the sins of your uh, great grandparents and your grandparents and your and your parents. So you can confess those sins. The Holy Spirit will lead you. If there's a curse, if there's a hindrance, see the Holy Spirit wants to get the truth to you. You ask the Holy Spirit, well, "Where's this curse?" And, and and so every sickness, every disease is under the curse of the law. You read Deuteronomy twenty-eight. You will see it. And if you see patterns in your family where, let's say, the, your great-grandparent had a heart attack, your grandparent had a heart attack. I mean, those are curses. You see those patterns repeating. Uh, and, you know, if you go to the doctor's office, they're going to ask you those things. Now, they yeah. won't say it's a curse, but really, if you start listing and you see these patterns of sickness and disease, in your family, that's really a curse. Mm -hmm. They're looking for curses. Well, uh, they, they'll just medicate uh, for it, but right, your, right, uh, right. your role and your responsibility is to repent, cry out to God. You know, mm -hmm. from uh, uh, Corinthians, I mean, uh, Chronicles uh, 714, uh, Solomon, when he dedicated the temple, uh, the Lord said, uh, if my people who are called by, by my, my name, name will humble themselves and, and pray and seek my face and turn from their, their wicked, wicked ways, ways, I will hear them and I will, I heal, will heal, heal their, their land. land. I will heal but their land. See, they're, you've got to repent. <laughs> oh, glory to Amen. God. Amen. If, if, you, if there are curses uh, on your family, then repent. And... Uh, uh, everybody is subject to that because it's what what our great grandparents did. Our grandparents, well, we don't know. We don't know what our great grandparents did. I I knew two of my. Uh, I guess there are eight possibilities. I only knew two, and I certainly didn't know what sins they may have committed or not committed. But I had to cry out for repentance and, and uh, ask for the blood of Jesus to be over me so that I would be free from those curses. And there were certainly curses in, in my uh, family history. Mm -hmm. and, and that could apply to any of us. And so to be righteous now, because what we're doing is practicing righteousness in the area of healing so that we will be righteous 
will be in right standing with God and our bodies will be healed. Mm -hmm. So repent. Repent of the sins of your forefathers. Amen. Or repent yeah. and cry out for mercy and, and plead the blood of Jesus. Uh, you, you know, Daniel, I can give you this example. Uh, when it was time for Israel to be restored, uh, he saw the sins of his nation, not just his ancestors, but his nation. And he began to cry out and repent for those sins. Well, you can do the same for uh, your family. You can repent for those. And then Israel was restored. But if there hadn't been somebody crying out for repentance and asking for mercy, uh, Israel wouldn't have been restored at that time. There had to be somebody crying out. Well, it's the same for your family. You need to be crying out uh, and repenting and repenting of the sins. And they may not have been your sin. They might have been somebody else's sin. Certainly, if it's your sin, cry out for repentance and ask for forgiveness uh, for your sins, but also cry out and ask for forgiveness for your ancestors. And, and you don't know, but the Holy Spirit will show you uh, what you, areas you need to pray about. <clears throat> okay, so let me just summarize. The new man, the new man, if you are operating in the new man, you will believe the scriptures. And when it says you ask, you will receive, you believe that. Even if your body's still sick, even if you have a high temperature, even if there's still symptoms, you call those lying symptoms. symptoms amen. The truth is what the God says in his word. So operate as the new man, which is the perspective from heaven towards earth, bringing heaven to earth. To earth. Amen. The old man is just going to say, well, I didn't get healed that I asked somebody to pray for me, but I didn't get healed. So the next day they'll ask God to heal them again. That's the old man mm -hmm. because they're looking mm -hmm. from the perspective of earth towards heaven, wanting God to do something else. But God did everything through Jesus yes, Christ, Christ on, on the, the cross. cross. Everything was covered on the cross. And, and he's not going to go back to the cross and do something else for you. He did it all. He the says it's work finished. It's finished. Okay, I'm going to thank you for being here. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Hallelujah. I'm glad the work is finished. And all we have to do is receive it. Hallelujah. We have the easy part. Jesus had the hard part. He had the nails in his hands and, the, and on his feet. And he had the crown of thorns on his head. And he had the spear in his side. He had the stripes upon his back. He, he had all of those, and he did the hard part, and he gave us the easy part, and that was to believe and to receive what he has already done for us. And 